Shalom, 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 shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Call Allah, Yom Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Ha'akudas, Brook of Thumb. I want to say double honors to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone who do teach and rule well. I want to say peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa, thought that are listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners gathered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, subscribing to this truth to you. I say Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh Sop, and I'm coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashim And um, this is like an impromptu. I was going to do this video like when I pretty much got up in the morning to go to work. Normally, I try to get a video in. Um, like after, uh, on my way to work, like sometimes I try to get there early so I can do the video first thing in the morning, get it out the way. When the Lord put the spirit on me to do two, you know, call Lord lay out by shot. Sometimes you know how Satan moving in his kingdom, you know, you know, which is a, a condition of the battle. I'm just gonna quote some scripture because, well, I was gonna go live just to make it like quick and boom boom, but. I prefer to do it like this because I can't bring out the scriptures when they come to me, when the Lord feeds me, or when Yahweh Hashem Yahshua feeds me, you know, scriptures to feed, you know, the listeners. And anyhow, um, basically, um, this lesson is inspired through the Holy Spirit based on something that just took place. So, it's, it, you know, just coming to the time that these spirits are getting roused up. You know, uh, I think the brother Atazan Wong from, or the bishop Atazan Wong from um, Atlanta has said something recently like that. Um, I didn't watch the video, but I, I remember watching that part of it. Uh, which, you know, the closer we get to the end, the spirits are going to get riled up. But what makes this um, highly spiritual is because I believe it was yesterday. It was, I believe it was yesterday because I did a video before I went to um, into work in regards to um, you know the militia and FEMA, and I think I may mention to my dad. Now my dad passed away in 2015. My daughter was born in 2015, and like three days later, my dad died. Highly spiritual, right? And you know, I got family members that stay out of state, my immediate family. So, you know, um, they came in the state for the funeral or whatnot. Uh, at that time, I was going through my testimony. So, you know, um, I know we were rehearsing the righteous acts. You got some brothers that are in the spirit. They don't go to funerals. You got some brothers that still attend, um, which, again, is rehearsing the righteous acts. So I don't think the Lord, you know, Again, it's a testament to your faith or whatnot, but that's neither here nor there. I didn't know anything about, you know, scriptures like that. I was learning about certain things and watching, you know, certain things play out through the spirit, you know. Because truly men, certain men have certain lots. So anyhow, uh, now mind you, um, I had been homeless for like, I became homeless in 2012. No, I became homeless in 2013. I went through my testimony in 2010. Came homeless in 2013 and uh, basically got off the street in 2018. So I was homeless for like five years. And um, seeing a lot, st starting to understand a lot of what I went through then, now, was showing you how cold the Lord is, you know, um, Elder said about a quick understanding, you know, that's when the Holy Spirit supper with you. But um, my point is, okay, so you know, you like I believe the brother, um, the head of Cleveland, the brother um, Tom Yaya did a video um, about how um, the Lord is gonna give us the ability to see spirits on people, and. To a degree, I think he gave us certain brothers certain gifts and talents. And, and you see that now. You know, I ain't going to go into it, but like I said, you know, 
certain things going on through the spirit. <laughs> that's how you gotta. That's how I know through the spirit that certain men gonna get spiritual power. But anyhow, my sister when I was homeless came. You know what I mean? Because they heard about I was homeless. My sister is like a boozy, boozy bro, right? Now, I ain't going to lie. Most men will find her attractive. And if I was to show you my sister, you're not going to believe her age. You know? Well, that being said, super bougie. So she up here in her mind thinking I'm just, she's like, she didn't want me to come to the hotel. Thinking I'm just like, like, I'm out here. Uh, what's the word? Um, damn. Uh, not indigent, but you know the court system calling that where you pretty much don't have nothing. That's pretty much indigent, indigent though. But she was making the same like in her mind. She pictured I was just completely dirty, bummy, smelling like shit or something like that. And I'm thinking like, with well, that, I'm showing you how you don't know nothing. Like it's homeless people that you might have been around didn't even know was homeless. You know, when I met my demon, she would come around us. She was homeless, but she wasn't sleeping on the street because. She had the opportunity to sleep for her employer, so she stayed in the building that she cleaned. She was able to wash her ass every day, change her clothes, so you would. But she didn't have no fucking home, you know. Um, a dude that I met out there uh, when I was um, homeless, he said uh, he wouldn't call himself homeless. He would say, "I'm houseless," because you know words have power. But anyhow, show you how how these spirits is truly being roused up. I mentioned my dad in the video yesterday. Tell me why my sister, I haven't talked to her since my dad's funeral. That was in 2015. It's 2024. She's probably about the blue. Now, I understand now why I'm half asleep. So I'm waking up. I don't know why. This is probably, I woke up probably for this. I went to bed probably like at 10, woke up out at like 1, and wake up to these text messages from my sister. Now, the issue was... Uh, um, she said pretty much on the website for the funeral home, they pretty much was able to um, leave like, you know, you could leave like like every year they do a ritual where they leave and, um, you know, post and saying, you know, how they missed, the, and, you know, my father and whatnot, her and my niece. So I called myself because the last time, like, I didn't even understand she had that much resentment, you know, because at first, like I said, she's talking to me then. Out the blue, she snapped on me like, oh, yeah, I remember you did this, you did that, you did this. And I'm like that. And show you how these people really won't see you as a new creation. The scriptures talk about uh, when you become, you come into Christ, you become a new creation. So old things are done. Matter of fact, let me get that. It's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 16 and it reads, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Mashiach after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Verse 17, the point. Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18, and all things are of the Most High who have reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Salakia. Verse 18, and all things are of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai who have reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai Mashiach and have given us to the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, to wit that the Most High was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and have Committed onto the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now. Then we are ambassadors for Mashiach. As though. Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shai did beseech you by us. We pray you in Mashiach's. Mashiach's. Instead that ye be reconciled to the most high. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of the Most High in him. So the point of it is, you know, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creation. So you are no longer the former man you once were. You know, it says, um, and, and, and verse 21. Oh, verse 20 says uh, basically that 
you be reconciled unto him. But the majority of these people won't be reconciled unto the Lord because they don't know the Lord. And, you know, I was just realizing that with the conversation I had with my sister. Again, the whole issue stemmed from um, me not being willing to mourn the dead, you know. Now, before I left the message, I didn't say hello. I didn't say anything. I just, she asked me, why don't you go ahead and leave some messages, you know, just saying, you know, how you miss him and whatnot. And I sent scriptures. Now, there's multiple scriptures came up. Here's one right here. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, and verse 10. Weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sorrow for him that goeth away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. And, you know, that's probably talking about Israel, you know, throughout the multitudes of the different captivities we went in for our disobedience. Now, the thing is, I got a mother that, because they all stay in Georgia, my sisters and my mother, you know, I mean, they moved down there years ago. When my father was still alive. And me and my, well, I think my brother was out. I can't remember, but I think I was locked up. When I came home, they was moving. You know what I mean? My sister, one of because I got a sister that reads the Bible, that believes in the Bible, but she calls on Jesus. But I speak to her pretty much a lot. You know what I mean? That's the only one that really deals with me and my my household. You know what I mean? And, um, you know what I mean? Like, so again, I haven't talked to this woman in like 19 years. And she got offended based on the scriptures. And, and I'm like, well, I wouldn't give a fuck for real, for real. I didn't have to explain myself why I did choose not to go, but I gave you scriptures, you know what I'm saying? And that's the funniest thing about Christians. They really don't really believe like they think they believe. Like I told her, it don't matter what you believe, it's matter what's written. You know what I mean? The scriptures say that the most our God thoughts are not our thoughts, you know? But it's a multitude of reasons why the Lord... Um, pretty much doesn't want you mourning the dead like that. Now, I think I found 2 Samuel. When you go to 2 Samuel, there's just three of them. 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 26, and it reads, And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. How that happened? A little weird should be happening with my phone. I don't know. <laughs> it said, She mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Yeah, I will buy some y'all shot. So I brought out that scripture like it's, it's one in Deuteronomy about um, when Moses passed. And I think it said the people mourn Moses for like 30 days. So it is a tier, a period of time, a period or a time period of mourning. But it, the scriptures also say it's a time to weep and a time to dance. Roughly paraphrased. It's a time to laugh and the time to cry. You know, you're not supposed to, uh, and then, you know, I, I hit her with that. I showed her morning and, um, you know, she was like, well, you know, if you're grieving, that's, you know, people are going to grieve. And I'm like, mourning is like pretty much like you, you don't have to really wear, like you got people that still, I know people like, uh, my Eve, before I moved to this location, um, uh, she, um, uh, had family like a family member that had lost a son, so every year they would do a balloon release. Like that's mourning. Because you basically setting up a tradition. It's pretty much like a ritual. It's a conviction. You got people that'll wear black to represent a certain day of somebody passing and never cry. But in their mind they wearing black for this person passing. That's a sign of mourning. You know? And like I said, literally, I know the spirit's getting roused up because, again, I mentioned my dad and all this took place. You know, it was like at 1 o'clock. I've been up. It's 3.33 now. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I think through the spirit, I was meant to wake up to do this video just based on this lesson. You know what I mean? Again, do I, did I love my father? Yes. But, you know, like I got a mother still here. But in my spirit right now, you know, I wouldn't, if she was to pass, Lord forbid, you know, because the scriptures do say honor thy mother and thy father, and that's difficult to at, at times. You know, because you got to understand. You know, I knew a female that, uh, like my, my my Eve. You know, like she had a rough ass relationship with her mother, but it seemed like, I, like I met a few women that no matter what their parents took them through, because of the scriptures, they say um, honor thy mother and thy father, so your life be long, or you have a long life. She would attempt to try to do that, and I'm talking about 
you got them control ass parents that even when you grown, you still try to control, like which is off. You know what I mean? Because once a, a man gets a certain age and, and go into a woman and pretty much have his own household, he's no longer, you know, yours to control. You know what I mean? But certain Jake be doing that shit. You know what I mean? Like still thinking they control. You know, like my babysitter like that. That's how she fucked up my daughter here. You know what I mean? And I really wanted to, I mean, like, this is an older lady, but it's just like, I, because I'm like, lady, it's going to be a fucking issue if you do this shit again, because I'm actually do something specific. If I knew you was going to do this and do that, I wouldn't even ask you. I'd have figured it out. You know what I mean? And she was just so, like, anxious to get in her fucking head. I'm like, you know, I'm actually the washer here. You try to braid her. I ain't actually the fucking do that. You put grown people chemicals in her. You know, Salaki. I ain't mean to digress because that shit really pissed me off. And it's spirits. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, that's what the fuck it is. This lady got short hair. Why the fuck you trying to do this? And then you can't do hair. I mean, yeah, I use you for the moment. If I can't wash it or something like that, yeah, I'll let you do that. But you try to do all this other. Then don't never wash it though. You just braid it. Bitch, I didn't ask you to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you are not the fucking parent. I'm the parent. You just a person that worked for me. You out your motherfucking mind. You know what I'm saying? The Salakia for the digressions. At the end, they, you know, I'm not bothered by it though. Like I said, again, if my mother was to pass on, Lord forbid, I wouldn't go to her funeral. Because I'm in the mindset of the elder apostle Gabar. You know, the beloved elder said, you know, he, he fell out with his family because he didn't go to his people's funeral. I think he said his mother. And, and and I'm under that same mindset. With all this shit going on, you know what I mean? Like, literally, you know, there's no life in it. The spirit left that body. I, my, I've had kids for the last... My daughter just turned nine. I just told you. I haven't talked to my sister in nine years. My mother has yet to see my kids, and she's been in the city. So I'm not saying I'm doing it just for get back, but if you... That's just like, okay, my mother's alive, and my father's passed on. You trying to mourn for my dead father, but my mother's still here that you're not speaking to. And that's the scripture. I just brought it out. Jeremiah chapter uh, 10, verse 22. I mean, even though I believe that's going to, when, you know, when Israel went into captivity. I lost it. Bear with me for a second. And Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 10, it reads, Weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away. So, you know, you weeping for somebody that's no longer here because that spirit is no longer here. You know, he up in the spirit world, you know, but my mother here suffering. And then, like I said, we at the end and you not even in the spirit of uh, like, damn, you know what I mean? Let me reach out or, you know what I mean? Like, that's how you know a lot of these people are just spiritually dead. You know, I brought out... Um, Isaiah, and, and, and I believe it's in Deuteronomy chapter 34 where it goes into Moses, uh, the mourning Moses, for a period of time. Because like I said again, you know, it's lawful to mourn, but it's not lawful. My dad had been dead for nine years. You know what I'm saying? This is the book of um, Isaiah chapter 57. If y'all choose to do that, you know what I mean? I, all I can do is bring out what I know. And that's what I told him. I said, you know, cause she, she made a statement talking about some, um, you know, we're trying to get all the children, all his children, to pretty much leave something on, on, on his website. And I'm like, well, you could try to do whatever you want, but I'm like, it's not in your power to do it because my powers say don't do it. And I could just tell you I'm not going to do it, but I literally showed you scripture and you supposedly a believer, but then when I give you the scriptures, you send up to reject it. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 1. The righteous perish and no man left it to heart and merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous are taken away from the evil to come. And then Ricky from Boston did a video based on the brother should come from, uh, well, not based on his video, but, you know, a lot of people bringing out the information about, I forgot, I don't have the, uh, the, the bill or the, the, you know, the legislation, legislation's um, number that talks about how They've been basically giving the military the 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 power to you know shoot civilians, showing you how this is not the same old America. You know what I mean? And she pretty much was like, oh, she didn't want to hear it, and you know, stop texting it. You know, I don't want to. We I just text you for that, and I'm like, what? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? My sister's been, you know, again, she 
I had to tell her, like, every man that you speak to ain't going to just, like, follow your – I'm not trying to fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, you my sister. Right? You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck what you said. You know, you text me. You know what I'm saying? But she made a statement about how uh, – we not the, I'm not the same person that she knew or the same little brother. And, you know, I didn't really think about it, but I thought about it. And I'm like, well, that's a good thing. Because we, if you is in this truth, you're not supposed to be the same person you was in the world. So all she did was compliment me. Compliment me. And then the thing is, is the spirit is so scary. Because like I said, I got a nephew when I was homeless. He pretty much, like, the Lord used him to help me. I send his brother videos every day showing you how... Like naive and just, you know, I doubt he even watch them. You know, my sister th that read the Bible do, but I don't. I doubt he do because she telling me he pretty much went on a vacation and got, you know, drugged where he was, you know, unconscious and in the hospital. Now, he just gave me some money. You know, uh, I tried to borrow some money. He just gave it to me because he always did it. Like I said, when I was homeless, like that's one of the reasons why I was the Lord put the spirit on him to be a helper to me. Call Lord, like and I want to believe that the Lord pretty much saved him because, like, he could have died if you went unconscious. You know, but she said he he's in the hospital, and he didn't even tell me. She said pretty much he's the reason why she reached out to me because I'm thinking my sister gave her the number, but it was actually he gave me the number. I mean, he gave her the number or told her to, because I guess she was asking about me. So she, he was like, go ahead, reach out. But my whole thing is, I was like, to show you how powerful our father was or is or whatever. Like, literally, I mentioned him and now you mentioning him. And I'm like, damn, you know what I mean? Beyond the grave, you know what I mean? Like, and again, that's one of the reasons why I know these spirits is becoming active. You know, she said, uh, Made a statement. I mean, I can show you the conversation because I, I really didn't try to get rude or anything. I said some shit that might have cut her, you know, because in her mind, she talked about she did this, did that. And I'm like, sweetie, don't you remember? Because I'm like, you manipulative. I I knew you was manipulative, but I didn't know you was controlling. And she got offended by it. I'm like, I mean, yeah, she used to manipulate me. I'm the baby, I'm the baby boy. So, you know, she used to pay me to clean up her room. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm, I'm like 12, 13 years old. So she paid me $100. You know what I mean? If I was younger than that, I might, no, I, I might have been like 12 or 13 because uh, she used to take me to drive her car. That's how I learned, first learned how to drive through her. And uh, she used to take me to a parking lot and let me drive the car. And uh, long story short, uh, she had paid me to clean her room and then she had given me like a, a government bear bond. And then some kind of way borrow the bond back. So I been knew she was manipulative, you know what I mean? But I, I'm like, damn, I ain't know you was this controlling though. Like, you text me, then telling me, don't text this and say this. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm not fucking you. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I ran for my demons. This bitch trying to be controlling. I'm one of them. Why do you think I, like, in, in my situation, like, the fuck? Is you see it? Like, I'm not about to lose. Man, listen. And I can't, guess what? That controlling spirit that these women got on them is going to run out the window when all hell break loose. Believe that. That's when they going to want to fucking follow. They ain't going to try and control shit. You know, and then, like I said, again, I knew it was spirits fucking with her because, like, she had this dude that she's supposed to marry when I had my baby. And I didn't want the nigga to touch my baby in the spirit. I knew the nigga was wicked. You know, just in the spirit. That's how the discernment. That's why I believe, like the brother did that video, the Lord going to allow us to see spirits on people. You know, just in my spirit, I knew someone right with that nigga. Did I was trying to put her on to the truth back then. And that's probably why she didn't want to hear what I was saying. Because, you know, she probably looking at me like, like I'm crazy or whatnot. You know, which that's the scary part about it. Because, you know, you know, uh. You know, like literally, like I told my other sister, I was like, well, damn, you know, the crazy guy, nobody listens to the crazy guy. I'm like, you know, even if the person considered crazy, just because the person considered crazy doesn't mean, you know, it's not true. You know, we were considered all the men that go out on the highways and hedges, you know, out on the highways and hedges in garment with the sides preaching the true doctrine and giving out the true name or proclaiming the true name of the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai, are considered and looked at as crazy. 
But it's videos coming out now that say, oh, those guys, uh, you know, is it it's safe to say that those guys are right? Scriptures say in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 7, I'm going to start at 15. I'm going to start at verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to all us, but Salakia. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Most High. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not the Most High made foolishness the wisdom of this world? Because they be looking at us like we're foolish because we're doing what we're doing, you know, the scriptures talk about the fool said of it in his heart, there's no power. But like I said again, she consider herself a Christian. But when I come with scripture, you know, it's like what the elder apostle, the beloved elder apostle Taurus say about vocab, like on vocab's uh, channel, you go to this video and you look at, on the comment section and nobody, these Christians are ain't putting up scriptures. You got a whole weapon in your hair, but you ain't utilizing it. You know, I remember the brother Taza Pa from Houston, the, the elder brother made a statement. He said, uh, this weapon is, a, this." he said, this Bible is a weapon. It's a sword. He said, and you need to learn how to wield it. He said, I, I can wield this. You know what I'm saying? Because you could, you know, what's that in the book of Hebrews chapter four? For the word of the most high is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So like it, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit. You know, like this truth is so cold, you can cut yourself with it. Brothers have told me that. Hey, brother, read the scripture. He on the line. Say, damn, the scripture cut him. Ain't that something? Because the scriptures talk about in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. We constantly are seeing. But I was just thinking like, when I'm listening to her and she literally, it was a spirit on her though for real. Then she was like, oh, she made a statement. She said, the spirit's my spirits, she was like, the spirits, my spirits are blessing me. I want to I want to show it, but I'm not going to do that. But she's like, my spirits are blessing me, my God. And I had to text her back like, you know, the most high God is, is, is a single solitary spirit. You know, and then I hit her with Luke chapter 12 because just because she was like, oh, blessing. So because you feel you're getting financial gain on this side, you really think that you're being blessed. This is the book of Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. You know, that's going to be your downfall. You know, it go back to the uh, the rich man. You know, when Yahweh said pretty much, he said, uh, he was talking to the rich man. He said he had faith and, you know, he did this, did that. He said pretty much, he said, what do I need to follow you? He said, give away all your money and come follow me. And he walked away sorrowful. So then how much faith did he truly have if he wasn't willing to, willing to risk it all? You know, th that's one of the key things that's going to get a lot of these people because they going to tell you, okay, boy, when they crash everything, okay, you want to get this stuff back, is you going to take this? And a lot of people out of desperation, come on, look how desperate people is. People lost whole homes and basically signed up for seven hundred fifty dollars, they didn't get angry. They like anything. Like that's fucking crazy. I just read something again. I got another video talking about it's another militia in Tennessee. The first one I did the video was in North Carolina. Now you talk about Tennessee. This shit is ready to pop, and I'm still laughing because I went on that Facebook app that they site. <laughs> and like I said, I normally don't do it. Brothers know how I get down. Like I wasn't shy and saying about how I feel. I look at it like a bitch is a demon. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do like spend the least amount of time. You know, I don't want to get to know you like that. I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, because I'm, my, you know, I got fiery darts fucking with me. My, my, like, that's why we tell the brothers, you don't know what I'm thinking. Like, we got to, I literally got to battle my motherfucking thoughts. Got to rebuke the thought. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I watch, you know, I get the understanding of it from y'all. I was shy. He was the example. When Satan was fucking with him in the wilderness. You know? How did he combat Satan through the scriptures? 
And you know, it says she pretty much called herself rebuking the scriptures. I'm like, well, damn, how, what kind of Christian are you? It's like in that movie Civil War. What kind of American are you? You, you motherfuckers going to die. And she going to die if, if she don't, re at least she repent. But you got something that's completely, re completely reject this truth. And we know that. And it's going to be people that you call yourself love. Like, literally, I know it's a spirit order. I say, you know, before it turned into what it turned into, I say, you know what? I love you. I got to get up in the morning and have a blessed night. And then the spirit just, that demon took over her and it said all this and trying to explain why it's not really mourning. If you grieve it for him, then, then you mourned him. That's why you sit up there talking about we miss you and all that shit. What are you talking about? And the thing is, like I told her, I'm like, I mean, you know, me and my brother, and I got two other brothers, and like we was in the streets, so we selling drugs, we doing drugs. I'm like, shit, I thought we was the only one doing drugs. You Is you crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, the fuck? It was like she threw up the fact, oh, yeah, my, my, my spirits are blessing me. You know, that whole understanding of, of that spirituality of a God about understanding going to get a lot of motherfuckers killed, man. Like, you know. I'm going to end it with this because at the end of the day, you know. Matter of fact, I know what I'm going to end it with. Second Ezra chapter 8. Verse 50, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like I said, and I love my little nephew because the fact is I don't even look at him like a nephew anymore. You know, I was listening to something that... Uh, DC Young Fly said, he said his daddy was like 60 when he had him. So he like he like got nieces and, and, and nephews that's older than him. And he was like, he was one day he was talking to his, his nephew. His nephew was like, pretty much, you know, tell him that. He was like, just tell him that we cousins. He was like, shit, we ain't going out nowhere. He'd be like, oh, yeah, this my nephew. He like, shit. He was like, fuck me. You know what I mean? It was funny, you know, because it, Jake, shit is fucked up like that. Like, my daughter, okay, my demon got a daughter that's grown, and she got daughters. So, my demon got a child by another man, and then I got a child. Now, technically, they're not really sisters. And it's through the spirit to show you that because, you know, it's just they don't really fuck with each other. Like, and it's not really me keeping them away. It's they not reaching out. I, like, I got to pay to get my daughter's hair done. Although, her daughter know how to do hair. Now, when she was braiding wild, they had that fake ass. Oh, that's my sister. sister. But I've had her for the last three years. And ain't nobody reached out. And they could have reached out. But my point being, uh, yeah, the Lord just had to escape my thought. Something about the demon, her daughter. Oh, call, call lawyer like y'all. What's your shot? So her daughter has a daughter, right? Or her daughter has two daughters. So technically, her daughters is her nieces. Because, but her daughter is older than my daughters. You see what I'm saying? So that's the confusion that be coming in with Jake. You know what I mean? But uh, this is the book of Second Ezra chapter eight. Cause the Lord really go fuck this place up. You know, like I was so getting into it. You know, like how the elder said when uh, Elijah was calling down fire from heaven, and he was getting into it. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if it's gonna be another hurricane, but I, I made a statement of my life when I was at Cap, and you know, at the end of the day, cause we still in hurricane season, and hurricane season doesn't end till for like a, another month, month and a half. So it very well could be another storm, but from what I was reading, it said Florida uh, pretty much already had three storms. So maybe the Lord goes lean back because four does represent mercy. But at the same time, you know, the wickedness of this place is reaches the to the heavens as well. You know, but I got into it. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, the Lord said another one. Because these people, like I said, the scriptures talk about the book of Isaiah chapter 26, you know, when thy judgments are in the earth, then uh, these people should know righteousness, roughly paraphrased. And what is the righteousness? You know, fear the Lord. That's righteous. Call Lord the Lord's name. That's righteous. But the Lord is not about to hear you fucking people. And I constantly say it. The scriptures talk about in the book of Proverbs and the book of Psalms about how the Lord's going to laugh at you. He's going to mock where your fear coming. It's the book of 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. My sister was very prideful. And that represents 
the spirit of two thirds and these heathens and you know they just which two thirds are in a heathen like state, but it represents like again it really like way kind of like irked my nerves and like way put a bad taste in my mouth because that's majority of Christians. My sister would subscribe to the scriptures, but then she'd probably hit you with that bullshit. Well, I'm spiritual though. You know, I, I, I met a chick right now. It is funny because, like I said, the bitch make like like we was talking, and I'm like, you know, she got like six kids. And we was talking, I'm like, well, damn. She talked about how hard it is. I'm like, well, she, you know, you should be able to get some support. And she like, she brought up the information about, uh, you know, the county welfare. She was like, well, it's, you know, it said, the, you know, income guidelines. So I'm like, well, she, when I made, you know, I was making almost like $20 an hour. So that was like almost $3,000 a month. I'm like, when I made that, I still qualified. She was like, her income like $6,000 a month. I'm like, God damn, you know what I mean? With that type of income, you don't need no motherfucking government assistance. She told me how much she paid for rent. That's twelve hundred. If you make it sixteen, fucking, I mean, you, if you make it sixteen, so like I keep saying sixty. If you make it six thousand a month, and your rent is only twelve hundred, how the fuck is you fucked up? But you know, I remember the elder of uh, Abu Abu Akbar did a uh, video where we, he was talking about uh, he was reading out the comment section. That was what inspired the what, through the spirit of power. Yahweh Shimei Shah. What is what inspired uh, the lesson? It, it was an Edomite, I believe. I mean, it didn't show no face, but it sounded like the words of an Edomite. You know, and he was like, you know, and with shit getting harder, these people ain't slowing down or or buying less. They they still try to buy more. He was like, so he's like, uh, what he's like? Uh, how did he say it? It's some shit that an Edomite would say. He said, "Tough enough, Buttercup, because it's about to be a bumpy ride," and it truly is. I will reread this, Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time should dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. I'm going to get to Second Ezra chapter 14. This go for anybody that will not repent and bow down to the Heavenly Father, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, meaning he is or he exists or he to be, by Hashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, meaning he saves or he is the deliverer. Or he deliverer. <coughs> the true names of the most high God is Son, who you eagerly call God in Jesus Christ. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 16. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. I will end it with Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. And it reads, For there shall be Great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. The time of Jacob's trouble. It's not coincidental that all these different militias is coming out of hiding because that's where you're going to get your civil war. You're going to have these Edomites fighting Edomites. Like Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2, the Egyptian versus Egyptian. And I forgot who brought it out, but they said a lot of the targets going to be these People that work for the government, like these local police officers, you know, uh, these county workers, the mayors and shit like that, these councilmen, and you minorities, which breaks down to who? Jacob, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, similar Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. Verse 22, and except those days be, so like it, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. We are at the end. So if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, civil Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the laws, to the statutes, and to the commandments of your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai, or you will be destroyed. With that, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to call Loyim, La Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Double honors to the elders and to the prophet. Salaki. Double honors to the elders and to the apostles of the great millstone who do to stamp. And with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to call Loyim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four quarters of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa thought they listen to the learning. Lord Willie, this is edified. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations appear like the other nations to subscribe to this truth. To you, I shall, to you, I say Shalom. Until next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Say shalom, shalom, and quab yashar Allah, shalom. Wa'alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.